YouTube, it's Tracy from Entrepreneur Girl. Today is Tracy's Tuesday Tips, and I'm really excited to be talking to you about income taxes today. But before we get started, I want to thank RB3 for his live show last night. I had a great time being on the show and being with such an amazing panel. And we had over 200 viewers most of the whole show. And just hearing your comments and being able to answer some of the questions anyway was really fun for me. So thanks again for everyone that has watched it. And if you want to watch it, I'll put a link below. Okay, so now we're going to dive into the really fun topic of income taxes. And this is a topic that all small business owners, online or otherwise, have to put up with. And there's not a lot of YouTube videos about it, especially for us eBayers and Amazoners. So I thought I would hit this topic because I do get a lot of questions about it. I think part of the reason why there's not a lot of videos about it is because we're not CPAs and we can only tell you what we know about the topic, knowing that you know we're kind of sticking our, our neck out there to try to explain something as heavy as you know state taxes or income taxes. But hopefully today I will give you enough information to get you started and to give you a general understanding of income taxes and how it relates to you as an e-commerce seller. Last week we talked about the rule of thirds and how that can help you determine how much you need to send in you know into your boxes and into your warehouse in order to obtain the monthly income that you wanted to make every month and when I talked about the rule of thirds if you bought an item for ten dollars you wanted to sell that same item for thirty dollars because ten dollars of it was your cost of goods ten dollars of it would be absorbed in all those fees we pay you know either our shipping fees or our packing material or our eBay PayPal and Amazon fees and then a third of that you would be able to pocket and put into your bank account and so some of the questions came in you know where does income tax fit into that is income tax absorbed into that one-third rule you know is that part of your fees and the short answer to that for me is no it's not unfortunately that is just the business model that's just a really good general solid rule to use when trying to determine if you should purchase something for you know as your inventory and it gives you an idea a snapshot of your account health when you're you know looking at your selling account but everyone whether you have a brick and mortar job or an online job you have to deal with income taxes at the end of the year and it's all very personal because we all have different deductions we have different you know head of household issues you know we have we have different issues that are taken into account with our income taxes so it's really hard to do a video like this and say well you're going to spend you know x amount of dollars or x percentage for income tax because there's no way any of us can you know, really determine that. But we do have a few basic rules that we can talk about today, a few things that we can cover so that you have a better understanding and you can make better decisions when dealing with your own personal income tax. Okay, the first tip we're gonna talk about today is get a really good CPA. So many people I know say, I can't afford a CPA. Is a CPA really necessary? And my answer would be yes, absolutely. A good CPA pays for themselves twofold. So you, you might think it's gonna cost you money, but a good CPA should actually save you money. An example of that might be if I go ahead and fill out my own Schedule C, it might say that I owe $2,000, but if I have a really good CPA and he knows the tax rules better, he knows how to work the deductions better, he knows loopholes that I don't know about, he might be able to get that same tax form down to my owing only $1,400. So in essence, he has saved me $600. Well, I might have to pay him three or four hundred of that, but I'm still I'm still in a better financial position than I was had I tried to do my own income taxes. And I believe that that's what a good CPA does. If your CPA is costing you a lot of money, you might be able to find a better one. When and not all CPAs are created equal, so some are better than others at being aggressive with deductions. You also want to make sure that your CPA understands e-commerce because e-commerce, especially with Amazon, really 
uh, hitting the scene, you know, in the last 10 years so big, it's, it's kind of taken on a new, you know, a new element. People are trying to figure out the laws. They're trying to figure out the taxes. They're trying to figure out this thing because this is, this is going to be huge. It's going to be the way of the future. And they're, they're having to understand how to deal with that. So it's important that your CPA understands the current rules with e-commerce and can talk to you about that because it is different having an online business and all the internet considerations and the online considerations than having a brick and mortar. Number two, legally everyone has to pay taxes everyone it is the law if you do not pay taxes you can have jail time you can pay fines it's a serious consideration there are a couple of excuses I hear a lot about and the first one is people say well you know I'm just selling my used stuff okay there is a thing with selling your used items that you no longer want personal items that you have that you want to get rid of so say I bought a bike for hundred dollars I've used it for a few years I don't want the bike anymore I sell it on Craigslist for $25 do I need to turn in that $25 as a profit well not really unenforceable for the majority because you're making under $600, you're not really trying, you know, intending to make money off of it. You're just trying to, you know, unload some of the things that you have. That would be like the IRS going to every single garage sale and making sure that they are claiming the garage sales on their taxes. I mean, could they? Yeah, probably, but would they? Uh, probably not. The second thing I hear a lot of is, well, it's just a hobby. Well, a hobby, according to the IRS, is basically where you break even. You don't make any money. And a rule of thumb for that would be, over the last two to five years, have you shown any profit at all? YouTube videos might be considered a hobby if I wasn't doing anything else because the little bit of money that I do make from my YouTube, I'm sure I could show a loss, you know, with the editing software and the cameras and the microphones and everything I've had to put into the YouTube channel. I could probably say, hey, that's a hobby. I'm not, you know, making a profit off of that. Now that it's kind of linked to everything else I got going on, I'm not sure I could pull that off, but you can kind of see where that would be an example of that. The rest of us are going to fall into the home-based business element of it and we are going to be required to pay taxes. If you have clients, if you are intending on making a profit, if you have multiple eBay and Amazon and Etsy accounts, if you're sending in inventory to a warehouse, there's no way you're going to get by with saying that it's a hobby or that you're just selling off your personal stuff. So you need to be paying taxes no matter what. Number three, if you sell on eBay, you probably already know that PayPal sends a 1099 form to the IRS showing your income. If your income is over 20,000 and 200 transactions. So you need to be mindful that that is occurring because the IRS knows that you're out there even if you haven't submitted any documentation. Number four, if you made $40,000 in sales last year, that doesn't mean you're going to pay on your $40,000. You only owe on the portion of profit that you made after expenses are paid. Expenses include such things as buying the inventory, all of your fees, eBay, Amazon, PayPal, even your banking fees from like Wells Fargo or Bank of America, office supplies, packing supplies, the cost to ship, your cell phone, your cell phone service, the apps, the scanning apps that you have on there, your GoDaddy bookkeeping, you know, any type of business expense like that can be deducted from your profit and much, much more. Number five, if you are an LLC or if you are incorporated, you should definitely have a CPA because that just goes beyond the scope of this video and it just gets really complex. If you're not those things, then you are considered a sole proprietor. And that means that you have to provide the IRS with a Schedule C to pay your taxes. Number six is the self-employment tax. Normally, when you have a regular job, you will pay 7.5% and your boss will pay 7.5%. But because you don't have a boss, you're the boss, you are responsible for paying all 15% of self-employment tax. 
And that is something that you will need to be mindful of so it doesn't surprise you and your CPA will talk to you about that. Number seven, let's do a real life example so we can kind of break this down what we talked about. So I go to a garage sale and I buy this amazing antique lamp for five bucks. And I'm so lucky because I come home, I list it on eBay, and I actually sell it for $205. So right now it looks like I have a $200 profit on my antique lamp. But I get to deduct all of my fees associated with that lamp. The gas of going to get it, I used my phone, so I have a, my phone, my phone service, and my phone apps, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So say all of the fees associated with that item, back to our one thirds rule, is 33%, or say it's even 30% of the $200. That means I can deduct $60 off of my $200 profit, and now I'm showing a profit of $140. I don't have to stop there. I can take all the items for the year that I have shown a loss for. I have that video about the reject box. So when I have that reject box of items that were either broken or they didn't sell or they weren't good enough to sell, then I can I spent money on those items and I can show a loss for all of them. Say I listed some things this year on Amazon and I had to have them sent back to me because they never sold. I can show a loss for those items because I paid for them and that was money out and I didn't make money back so they are at a loss. And all of those losses can be applied to my profits for the year. Number eight, the last tip. You need to keep really good records. A lot of people ask what type of service that I use to record keep. Do I use Excel spreadsheets? Do I use TaxJar? Do I use GoDaddy? Do I use Inventory Lab? You know, what, what types of programs are helping me to kind of sort out my inventory, the cost of goods sold, how much profit I made on each item, all the expenses that I have in my business. And what I use is GoDaddy bookkeeping. It's very inexpensive. It's around $9 a month, and you're not gonna find much else that will help you as much as it helps you for such a low fee. What you're responsible for, as far as the IRS goes, is you wanna keep really good records on the cost of the items that you're buying. You also need to keep records on the profit that you made on those items. And you also need to keep record on any expenses that were associated with those items, like your scanning apps and your smartphones and your laptops and all of that. Really good article produced by GoDaddy. I'll put the link below. It's called Demystifying Small Business Taxes for online sellers. So click on that, go ahead and enter your email so that you can have it sent to you. If you have any problems, just contact me. But it's a really good breakdown of the taxes, and I like that they put this types of information out. I love GoDaddy because I don't have to deal with the spreadsheets. As much as I like Excel, I don't have to deal with that. I love the fact that I can enter in all of my e-commerce sites and I can have them all in one place. It automatically syncs with these accounts so I don't have to manually enter in every single item. Every transaction is downloaded into GoDaddy. It's tax preparation a breeze. You can, at a click of a button, download all of your tax forms. It will actually fill out the Schedule C's for you. In addition, you can download profit and loss statements and a multitude of business reports. That is the program I use. I'm not affiliated with it in any way. I just really like it and that might be something worth checking out if you're looking for something. So that is today's Tuesday tip. I hope it gave you a good overview on the expectations of income taxes. Again, I'm not a CPA and I really believe that you should have one. Um, I have one and even though all of these things are a great help, at the end of the day, I can hand everything off to someone that is certified to be doing this, very knowledgeable, and I don't have to worry. Hope this helps, guys. I look forward to seeing you next Tuesday for Tracy's Tuesday Tips. If you haven't already, please subscribe, click like below, and I'd love to hear from you in the comment section. Talk to you later, bye.